In this video, I'm going to talk about designing a class that uses another class as one of its building blocks. Uh, in this example, uh, I'm going to create a MyPod class, and it's going to be built using MySongs. In other words, MySongs are going to be inside the MyPod. Uh, so the MySong class is a relatively simple class. It has uh, two instance variables, a, sh a title and a rating, a constructor, zero argument constructor, or two argument constructor, getter and setter for the rating, and a two string that prints out the title and the rating. Okay, and I have a little driver just so we, so we can see how this works. I have I'm going to create a song, and I'm going to print it out as a rating of five. If I run that, it will print out the statistics for that song. So that's what a song class is—a pretty simple class for a song. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a my pod class that will hold multiple my songs, just like a a, a, a my pod can. So in the my pod, let's define what that actually is. I have a little template here for it. So uh, I'm going to just create a private uh, string and I'll give it a color because my pods have a color and a private. Now I want to hold multiple songs. I'm going to use an array of my songs. My song. Call it uh, song list. Okay. And uh, I'm going to have a constructor. Uh, excuse me, public my pod it's a zero argument constructor and so what this what this uh, constructor is going to do is the following it's going to give the uh, my pod a default color and actually create the array remember here I'm going to I'm stating that there is going to be an array called song list but I've not yet created it. in other words I don't see the word new here I have not yet created the array. So a zero argument constructor is going to look like this. Uh, this dot color equals, I'll say a new string and we'll say uh, the, no, it's a white my pod. And this dot song list is new my song and I'm going to say it can hold three songs. Okay. So now I've created, I've actually created the, created the array and it can hold three songs. Okay, and of course we can change it, that number to hold more songs as we go along. Then I'm going to create a two argument. I'll, I'll just give it a one argument constructor here. Let's just copy this real quick. I'm going to say I'm going to supply an argument where I can actually provide the color. So I won't say white. I'll say whatever the user wants to define it as. Okay. I still need to create an array, but this time I'm going to put some songs in. So I'll say song list the zeroth one equals my song. I'll actually create the song right here. New my song. And I'll say a song has a title. So I'll go with don't stop leaving. And it's a five. And I'm going to say song list new my song and we'll use the stairway to heaven and also five okay and I could create a, uh, a third one if uh, necessary so I've created two songs and I put them in the uh, my pod this could be done like I've done right here by hard coding it I could have a J option pane I could actually supply a parameter to feed in the actual songs and then populate the array uh, I just want to concentrate on how this all works, so I'm just going to put the songs in right here. Um, and then finally, I'm going to create a two string here. I'm going to say public, so I can print this thing out. Public string, two string. Now, in method two string, and this is not a, let's just solve this here, it's a multi argument constructor. Actually, I actually have one argument constructor. All right, so now I'm going to write a two string, but notice this is a two string for the my pod class, not the song. The song has its own two string. I'm going to create a two string for the my pod. In other words, when I print a my pod, what am I going to see? I think I'm going to, I should see the color of it or print out the color and print out the songs in the actual my pod. Okay, so this again, this is a two string for the my pod, not the song. The song has its own, which we'll see how that comes into play in a second. So I'm going to, uh, let's see here, I'm going to say, uh, string 
output equals new string. Okay, it has nothing in it right now. And I'm going to return the output. Okay, so the question is, what do I put in there? Well, I want to print out the color of the MyPod and the songs in it. So I'm going to say, uh, now, uh, output equals, and let's see, color. I'll say the color of this MyPod is color. Okay, so I can simply print out the color. All right, so let's just test this before I go into the actual songs. I'm going to create a driver. Here's my template, and I'll say my pod. This is for your car, so car pod equals new my pod. And I'm going to use a zero argument constructor first. And system dot out dot print line car pod. Let's see what I get. So I'm going to create a MyPod. I'll call it the CarPod. And I'm going to use a zero argument constructor, so it should be white. Okay, it should be white because that's the default color. So I'm going to close that, compile. Hopefully I have no errors. And run it. And I have a white iPod. Okay. Or I can also use, I'll create a second one. I'll call this the house pod or inside the house, and I'll give it a color of blue. And I'll print out the house pod. So I'm going to create a blue house pod. I'm going to use the one argument constructor to set the color to blue. And let's see if the uh, two string works there. Close it, compile it, or run it. And we get a blue one. Okay, so that's great. We get the color. Now let's get the songs. Let's go back to the two string. So right now I just have the color. So since this is an array, I'm thinking the best thing to do is to go through the array with a loop and to get the song and concatenate it or add it onto the output and just return one big long string that has the color along with the song. So let's try that. Now, a for loop is what we've been using. I'm going to introduce a new type of loop, which is good when you just want to cycle through everything to grab all elements. Okay, so I'll say for my song, this is new. Uh, song list three. This is called a for each loop. Notice it's different than the other for loop, which has int index, index less than something, index plus plus. This is a new type of loop. And what it does is going to go through every, it's, the way you read it is for each my song, I'm going to call it song, in the song list, I'm going to do something with it. So I'm basically going to extract every song beginning with the zeroth one all the way to the end, extract each one and do something with it. Okay, so I don't need a counter, it just goes from beginning to end. Okay, um, and typically when you want to go through everything and print things out or output things, this is a good loop to use. So output plus equals, I'm going to just add on to the output because I already have this, I'm going to keep adding to it. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do, because I'm doing this, I'm going to put a new line here to end just so it skips the next line um, song and give it a new line so I'll go to the zero song so the, the output has this initially then I'll go in this loop and say hey give me the zero song well it's don't stop believing so that'll be added onto the output go to the first song stay to heaven and that'll be added to the output and so forth okay you might be in, you know, wondering what's going to happen to that third one because there's actually three elements that it can hold. We fill in two of the three. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. But let's see if that works. Going to compile it. I'm going to close. Compile that guy. Let's see if this thing works here. And okay, this is interesting. The white iPod is null because if I use a zero argument constructor, there are no songs in it. So it's null. It's an empty MyPod. The other MyPod, the blue one, actually has both songs. And the third one is null because it's empty. Okay, So a couple interesting things here. Uh, null means nothing. We, the array has nothing in it, so that signifies nothingness, null. And then the other interesting thing is when I actually went to the array of songs and said, hey, give me the song, look what it did. It actually 
called the songs to string. So there's a chain, a chain chaining effect here. I called the two string in my pod, and my pod then called the two string in song. So they're linked together. So that's how that all works. And then, of course, if I put a third song in, if I put a third song in, that will get rid of the null for the third. And I'll say Billie Jean. All right. And now that blue my pod should have Billie Jean. Oh, here's what I did. I, I actually overwrote it, didn't I? I got to go two. That's what I did. I actually overwrote Stairway to Heaven. I got rid of it. Close it. Compile. Our driver. And there's Billie Jean. Okay. So this is a an example of class composition. I'm composing one class based on another. I'm creating a MyPod and I'm building it with an array of songs. Okay. So we're actually creating these building blocks of songs, in, in our case, to build a bigger object. And you can put my songs in a my phone, my songs in a my pad, my songs in any other class, so you can compose them. Um, in the in the next video, we're going to talk about the use of an array list. So this array is it has its limitations. It is we have to give it a number of three or some number, and you can see if I don't fill it in, I, I lose some space. I have this empty space there that I can't really use for anything else. Uh, so array list actually helps us solve that problem because it's it, it can. Uh, it's done, it can change its size. An array can't. But um, other than that, we have the same basic class structure. Instance variables, constructors, uh, one argument constructor, a two string. And this little new for loop called the for each loop simply goes through each element of the array all the way to the beginning to end. Takes each, extracts each thing, which in this case is a song. So for each my song called song in the list, do something with it. And I'm just adding it to this output string and I, I'll i put it there. And you can see here with two examples, I have my two different MyPods. So this is an example uh, of a class composition, designing one class based on another.